Welcome back to Hill TV for the holidays. Joining me now is Harry Spikes, who's a candidate for Congress in the February 4th special election to fill out the term of recently deceased Congressman Elijah Cummings in Maryland 7. Harry, thanks for joining me here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. You got into this race after working for the congressman for about 15 years. Yes, sir. So I, I watched the remarks you gave mm -hmm. at the service, mm -hmm. and you talked about what moved me and struck me, the five lessons uh, right. that you got from him. I interviewed him here for the show. My wife, as people know, uh, worked for him, so mm -hmm. we've been around him for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to hear from you, just kind of what you learned from working oh, for Oh, sure, a sure. Um, it wasn't easy, first of all, at that funeral because I was still mourning. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, trying to focus on my feelings and making sure that I convey what he taught me was the biggest challenge. And then one day it just hit. I said, you know what? Let me just go to the conversations we had one-on-one -on -one that he was trying to build me up as a man. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk to folks about being there for your friends, when I talk to people about being greater than your pain, those are the things that, that he gave me. And I said, you know what? Let me share that. Let me share that with the world, because that was the true Congressman Elijah Cummings. You talk about being there for your friends. One of the things you quoted saying is, be the foundation when someone's house collapses and be the roof when the rain comes. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That is important to me because so many times we deal with problems in life and we feel like we're alone. The congressman was famous for just calling someone out the blue and saying, how are you doing? And ironically, I started doing the same thing. I said, you know, let me call my friends. And it was never failed, Jamal, when I found out that they were dealing with things that they weren't sharing with people. And I often ended my conversation saying, if you need anything, let me know. If I can't help, somebody else can will, will be able to help you. So that's where that came from, you know, being the foundation, because anything can happen in your life. So did you know, or did you know then that you wanted to run for the seat? No, 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 no. What I actually said to myself when he passed away, I was still mourning. But then I said to myself, what do I do with these 15 years of skill? I, for, for a second, I, found, I felt like I was a, a veteran, you know, combat zone. You had all these skills, but how do you transfer those skills into the real world? And that's what hit me. And I, I didn't know how. Yeah. I didn't know how. So at what point did you figure out <clears throat> that this was a calling for you? One day, um, I gra gathered the courage to go to his gravesite, And I just stood there. And I asked him to, Congress, to just give me an answer. What should I do with everything you've given me? And it just hit me. I mean, one day he had told me, he said, Harry, you'd be a great leader. He just said that to me years ago. And yeah. it, it stuck. And then I said, let me give it a shot. Let me say, hey, these 15 years won't be in vain. I can use what... This great man taught me. He was my boss, yeah. but he was also my mentor. And that's when it hit me. And I said, you know, I'm going to do this. I believe in myself. I'm going to do it. All right. So if you think that this is something that he would want you to do, you're in a little bit of a, of a, a family friend circle pickle here. Okay. Because there's a lot of people running for this seat, mm -hmm. including Kwasi Mfume, who mm -hmm. uh, had the seat before the congressman uh, mm -hmm. had it. And... Maya, that's right. his, that's his right. Uh, widow, that's right. who's also mm -hmm. uh, running for this seat. Mm -hmm. So how do you think the congressman would feel about having this kind of three-way fight going on among some of the people he was closest to? Knowing his personality and knowing who he was, he, wouldn't, he would say, don't let me choose. I know, knowing that after all these years, I do know that all the people running are great individuals. We all bring an amount of experience and knowledge to the table. But knowing him and his personality... He wouldn't want to be put in that situation. You know? Now, his daughters chose. Yes, they did, which, which I did not see coming. Okay. Which I thought was, first of all, was a blessing, especially because it showed me personally that my 15 years of working with the congressman weren't in vain. And the congressman once said, he said, Harry, the greatest gift you can get is someone knows you or notices you or sees you. And they saw me. And for them to say, Harry, we endorse you, we believe in you, that, that, that meant the world to me. It really did because... Um, it felt special. It felt like I had a blessing from the grave, you know? So I, I, I think about that often, and um, I always revert back to the conversations that he and I had about leadership and how we should better be effective and efficient to help people. And when that plays in my mind, um, and for me taking and going on this journey, for his daughters to endorse me, it's like, man, I'm, I'm okay. All right, so we, um, one of the reasons why we wanted to pay attention to this seat mm -hmm. um, and this race that you're in is because he was such a towering figure. Yes, sir. And in particular at this moment where we're about to impeach a president of the United States mm -hmm. uh, and see him before the Senate where he may end up, he has to stand for, he has to stand for conviction or not. Mm -hmm. um, 
he would have been fully a part of this moment. Yes, he would have. Um, so obviously the next person who comes into the seat is not going to come in to the chairmanship of the committee he held. Right. Uh, but you will come in to a role mm -hmm. where a lot of people look to uh, the congressman from uh, this Baltimore right. district of right. Maryland right. as a leader. Right. Uh, so right. what do you offer in that? Well, I tell folks, the first thing, I will never be an Elijah Cummings, but I tell people I would be the best Harry Spikes you've ever seen. I tell folks that I am very passionate about housing. The congressman knew that. Uh, my three tiers are educate, um, employment, um, education, of course, um, housing, and of course, um, medical. You know, I want to make sure that we focus on those three pieces. And I know that the leaders before me, when they got in office, they didn't have seniority, right? But they moved up through the ranks and became leaders in their own right. And I know that's going to happen um, for me. But if I, if I could choose, like, the first thing I wanted to jump into, it would have to be housing and health care. I've always been passionate about that. Okay, so what do you want to do for people in housing and health care? Sure. So with health care, I want to do this. I'm, I've met people, especially when the congressman was sick. We had folks who were in the hospital that could not afford their drugs. And a lot of people don't know, when the congressman first went to the hospital two years ago, he and I had conversations about that a lot. We actually met folks in the hospital while he was there. So we want an affordability piece. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that there's accountability on that level where folks know they're not getting overcharged and that they can't afford the medications. I don't want people to have to choose between their home and their medicines. Also, I've often said about housing, especially in our district, we have a really great balance of, of all type of housing. The challenges are we have housing with houses of $400,000, but we have communities where the community only is making twenty dollars or $30,000, right? I want to make sure that we have developers that say, hey, if we move in these communities and, and build, let us build houses where people can't afford. And on top of that, let me say this, for the federal side, that there are down payment assistance for folks that can actually have money to purchase a home and also closing costs, because that's, everyone has a dream of home ownership, but what they don't realize is a lot of fees that go into the home that they want to have. So I'm very passionate about that. And, I, and that's why, if you notice in the speech, the Congress and I always talked about carpentry, because he knew how passionate I was about how we would drive and just talk about different areas. But I also told him this, Congressman, the problem, there's no person out here that doesn't want an affordable home. They just can't afford the homes that are being built. Okay, so how do you win this race? I am um, focusing on all of the outreach and, and, and relationships that I've had throughout my entire 15 years. People that know Harry Spikes for the work that he does. I will say I'm not one of those people that gets on TV and gives you promises. Many of the things I talk about, I've already done. A lot of people don't know I'm a chair of a homeless shelter for 15 years, a vice president of a homeless shelter for 15 years. Housing is, is what I do. I, I work with folks to try to help seniors get housing for another nonprofit I work with. And then on top of that, I was blessed to be in the congressman's office and work on housing. When I talk about Social Security, when I talk about health care, I worked on Social Security benefits for 15 years. And a lot of people don't know there was a prostate cancer legislation I put together that helped out now more than one million men per year. All right, so that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. How do you win, though? Right. Who, who supports you? People in the community that know Harry Spikes, folks in the districts that have seen the work that I've done through the years. They're the ones that will reach out to me and say, Harry's our guy. We believe in him. We know that he's truthful. We know that he's honest and sincere in his approach to helping us. And you've got uh, both uh, inner city Baltimore, Baltimore City. Howard County and Baltimore And you've got County. some Howard County. So are you going to play out in the county? All, 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 everywhere, everywhere. I do not want to be a leader that just looks at one spot. You can't do that because we have constituents. Senior citizens? You got it. Senior citizens. Students? Babies. <laughs> and, and, and we get babies vote, to vote, that's a different vote, problem. They can vote, right. <laughs> but no, seriously, we, yeah. we're reaching out to all those areas because that's important. That's important. Okay, so um, you got ca campuses there, Morgan State, uh, other schools uh, that are there, Johns Hopkins. Hopkins. Coppin. Right. Yeah, and you're a Morgan State grad. I'm a right? Morgan State grad, proud Morgan State grad. Yes. I don't know if that helps you or hurts you. What do, what I, do the professors say? <laughs> you know what? The professors are proud of me, especially okay. my political science department. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos and head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.